Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's going on here in the greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton. It's a pleasure to welcome you back. And today is my guest is Esther Herrick from Concord Grange. Yes, you're going to hear somebody talk about it besides me. But uh, even though it's summertime, we still are very busy in the Grange. And uh, Esther and I will sit here and tell you a little bit about what Concord Grange is doing. It's, it's based on the heights here. We're getting ready for our 105th anniversary next year. And who knows? So thanks for coming in, Esther, at the very last minute today. You're welcome, Dick. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's, uh, you never know, you know, when, when your guests will line up and then things happen so and Ian is so good to come in and to just sit here for you try to line them up but you know things happen so but it's so hot out there gosh we're talking thunder showers today but I don't know rain was supposed to be last night I know <laughs> you know when you drive up Loudon Road up there by the uh, National Guard Armory with that big blue spruce tree is that my grandfather planted back in 1971. You'll see that Concord Grange, of course, it still has the sign that says Pineconia Grange, which was us, but um, Esther has been more or less in charge of that area for the flowers that we plant there in the spring and summer. And then we also have a garden over at Keach Park right where the flagpole is, and so we water that, but I'll tell you, boy, this year, if we hadn't been watering it... We wouldn't have had any flowers. Oh, cars. my gosh. I was up the cemetery just now, and I try to go up there at least two, three times a week, but, boy, the ground is just so dry up there. It's dry everywhere. Yeah, I mean, some of the plants, flowers that I planted, I have done well. I mean, Marigolds and geranium seem to weather the dry weather okay, but the petunias and uh, um, what's the other one? Petunias and uh, impatience and some of the other ones don't seem to do as well. And mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes to get down there. And we put we do. I, I know Deb and I take down eight gallons of water, four for each area. Right. That's yeah. about what it takes yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah. And we wait till after sunrise, sunset to, to really, they That's say it's not, best. they say it's not good to water stuff in the daytime, even your own lawns at home. No, I know, but, but you, you do it when you have the time. <laughs> But uh, thank goodness for you, and then of course Bob and Cheryl Corellis, they take turns, and so it's covered, pretty much covered. Almost every day. Yeah, but it's funny how this summer is gone, but the Grange has been doing fairly well. I mean, there's just a, there's a few of us dedicated ones who know that something needs to be done, and we're there to do it. But right. there's, there's others who say they want to, but... They do have other obligations, but now you used to belong to a Grange in Massachusetts. Right? Yes, I did. Was it the same way down there? Yes, there were a few faithful ones that came every time, ten or twelve, and uh, they were the ones that eventually got too old to do. We used to do Grange suppers. We used to have a Grange fair, and it got to the point where our members were all 55 and over as they are yeah. here and we had to cut up those things oh I know we used to we we used to do a fall fair and supper and the odd sale all day of course if you go back in our history Pineconia Grange used to do a fair plus a supper they also had a baby show best baby I guess they had a boxing show. That that always, as I read the history of our Grange, that always interests me. How in the world did they do a boxing show? Either inside the hall, which I don't see how they could have done it, right? or that they must have done it outdoors, mm -hmm. 
Well, that's all, unless they have rented some other big hall. I don't know how, but that had to have been interesting. Was it local people? They don't have a say who participated. No. Really? <laughs> you don't know if it was some big name boxes or if it was amateur boxes or what. But and uh, but one thing our Grange has always been involved in was the community. And like I told the other gentleman, it was true. We were the ones that got the first police officer up here, the first firefighter up here, a fire truck. Um, it was engine five, and it was in, you know, that's what the number was. Now it's seven up here. But, you know, we've always been very much in the community. They used to have Halloween parties for boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Christmas parties for getting with kids around Christmas time. You know, it was always a big thing for the community. And of course, Saturday nights we would have public suppers. And it was always ham and beans. Mm -hmm. That was always the menu. Ham and beans and salads. And of course, the big thing was the homemade pies. That's what we were famous for. And... Um, what was the, uh, oh, I know, okay. The joke was that P of, it, it was the Grange was known as the P of H. The, 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 the traditional name is Patrons of Husbandry. Right. But the P of H stands for a pack of hogs. Oh, dear. <laughs> 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 because every time, because Grangers knew how to eat. That was one thing oh, they okay. did. They never starved. Right. They would have uh, oyster stew uh, suppers after the meetings, sometimes 11 o'clock at night. Oh, my. Or they would have um, you know, ham and beans on Saturday and pies. I mean, it was always eating. Food. Food. Yeah. Food was always that big, that big menu. Well, I learned young that Grangers were good cooks. Oh, yes. They were always good cooks. And, you know, and, and that's what, and it was at the different conferences that we had, New England conference especially, that we heard that, that nickname, Pack of Hogs, P of H. That's what it stood for. And I, I said, I said, oh, my goodness, that's what the people think we are, Pack of Hogs. <laughs> But, you know, but that's the way it was, though. It's almost like the Amish or the Shakers when they did a public meal. I mean, there's some places in Pennsylvania that you go to for the Amish, and they put the food right on the table. Yes, they do. It's all sort of family style. Yes. It's no uh, one one slice of ham or one, one uh, scoop of beans or one right. scoop of potato salad or coleslaw. It's... How much you ever want, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll bring out, keep bringing it out, you know, and uh, although I can first remember, though, when I first joined the Grange over here, that ham and beans consisted of baked beans, no doubt about it, it was baked beans, they would never serve canned beans, but they would serve, uh, it was always um, boiled ham, mm -hmm. sliced boiled ham, that was the, what they did and I don't know who changed it I think it was my mother we changed it to the big baked hams well boy we didn't sell out then our crowd just phew we were going to three servings sometimes in that old hall over there which meant for us would be sometimes a hundred and well you could serve a fifty 50 to 60 at a serving. So sometimes we'd be lucky to serve about 160. I meant three full settings. Usually there was two full settings mm -hmm. and maybe a half of a third setting. But, um, but okay. now, and, and the thing of it is, you would charge 250. Yeah. That's what it was, a 350. Now they're up to, I think they finally have reached the $10 mark for adults, $5 for kids, and under 6 free or under 5 free. Mm -hmm. But where could you go 
for all the foods you want to eat, and then pies. Mm -hmm. You weren't limited to just one slice of pie. It was two pieces, sometimes three. And there were usually a variety. Oh my gosh, you had lemon meringue, you had mince, you had apple. Uh, cherry was a popular one. Apple and cherry were two popular ones. Uh, sometimes blueberry. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were lucky, you might get a chocolate cream in there, and that was popular. Um, lemon meringue, lemon meringue right. that was another one. Um, you might get a blackberry pie. A strawberry rhubarb, mm -hmm. another one. So, but they were always, and you could drink as much coffee or mi drink milk, whatever you, the kids wanted to have as much as you could. Right. Or iced tea if it was summertime. Yeah. But the Grange always has been though for the community, and you know, uh, we you, we've been working, you've been working hard on getting the flowers done for the spring and summer. We've got coming up a new program. This will be the fourth year. Of the meet, eat, and greet. It's on Tuesday, July 24th at Keach Park, and we'll be serving desserts this year. No hot dogs because we can't find a vendor, vendor. with hot dogs. Right. So we're back to the all kinds of desserts, and um, from from um, cupcakes to uh, cookies to. Uh, squares to uh, brownies, you name it. And it's supposed to be all homemade. And um, also with sound, also they'll have bottles of water over there, cold water. And chips. And chips, uh, big chips and things. And so, you know, it'll, and then we have Never's Band concert right after that. Right. So it should be a great evening. I will tell you though, the concert will be down toward the new community center. That's where they're going to be plugging in right. the bandwagon. So we'll come in off the Canterbury Roadside. Unless you want a long walk across the field. Oh boy, I know it. That no, can be a long one too. Well, we had Splash Bash when they were doing the city was doing that. Yep. We, we did that for a few years, and then they stopped doing it because they didn't want to pay for a, B, a DJ. So. The, but I've enjoyed it. The first thing that we do in the spring is the dictionaries. Yes. Yeah. For the schools. Yeah. We bought how many dictionaries this year? About 300, I think. 250 mm. or 300. Yeah. And that went for all the public schools in Concord. Right. And Dunbarton. And Dunbarton. And wasn't it? I guess that was just Dunbarton. And yeah. that's for the third graders. Yes. Yeah. So they each has their own paperback dictionary. And they... You and I have both been to the schools, and they're thrilled to get them. I know, because they thought with computers and stuff that they, why need a dictionary? But they all like them. Yeah. They always it. ask if we're coming back. The office will ask us if we're coming back next year. Yeah. <coughs> and they all want your auto, some of them want your autograph, autograph and pictures yep. or whatever, or hugs or something. But, you know, we're glad to bring them there if that's what they want them for, you know. But, and, and then, then we, we get some interesting thank you notes from the kids. And I forgot to give them to I have got an envelope that came in the mail from Dunbarton for you and Rodney Huntoon. Okay. And I keep getting it. I'll bring it to that 24th function over there so you can have it. But yes, it came in the mail just for right after the, uh, just before the July, uh, June meeting it was. And uh, and it's fun to read their thank yous, and lots of times you can oh, tell yes, I they know. copied the words out of the dictionary. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know it. It's interesting. I think we got some thank you notes from. We got some. I remember from Beaver Meadow. We didn't get anything from Abbott Downing, and we didn't get any from. Um, McAuliffe School, but we did get some from Broken Ground, yeah. and uh, you know those are good, good. School. I know Mr. Pike up at Beaver Meadow and Mr. Uh, Finney. Matt Matt Finney, yes, from uh, Broken Ground was always good to work with. So, but it's good, and then of course looking down the road, the Christmas parade, and mm -hmm. uh, 
Christmas tree lighting are coming up and and then after that it's getting ready for Christmas with buying Christmas toys or uh, clothes for the kids that we take uh-huh. and that adds up in money too right you know and we also have a project with family and community of doing nighty night bags yes for the yeah, children we, yeah the children homes children's homes that come into or shelters shelters or that are sent out to homes that have nothing but their clothes on their back yeah and those bags have a toy a book and a blanket in them yeah that that's, they something that they can call their own that's been a real good project we try to go around the state with them um, but we just never have enough because you know the granges overall have really shrunk a little bit right but we do that, and then we also uh, trying to do the uh, um, Santa remembers teens at Christmas. But <clears throat> and we've done fairly well with that last year. This this last year was a bad year, but the two previous years we did really well with it. But of course, the Granges in New Hampshire haven't done it as good as they should have done. But they're getting smaller. No, which is the Granges the worst are part. smaller, and they're also. It seems that there aren't that many young people coming in. No. And so the people are on fixed incomes, and it's very difficult. You can only canvass your own people so many times with letters. Exactly. To ask for donations. Yeah, you're right, you're right Esther. So it's, it makes it difficult for us to meet our obligations because our dues money only, we only get about, what, $9 a person. That's what I thought, yeah. The rest goes to the state and the national, so mm. it's it's difficult to get enough money to cover the projects that we like to do. Yeah, it's true because I was thinking that yeah, we sent out the letter for the those who haven't paid their dues, and when I think about it, I said, my gosh, that's all we get. Mm-hmm. But the rest of it goes to state, state and national, yep. especially national. You know, but. I can remember when I first joined the Grange in 66, it was um, $2.50 for dues. And look at that, you know. I can remember getting, well, gasoline was like 50 cents a gallon, or 35 cents a sure. gallon, you know. Bread was 10 cents a loaf. Yeah, I know it, and the penny candy was crazy. That was good. Now is more like a dime of candy a piece, um, and then there was um, what was it penny candy? What was it? Um, well, you even like your hot dogs or hamburgers, you could get a pound right. of hamburger for almost nothing. But eggs were cheap. I mean, I can remember my mother, my grandmother sold eggs. Mm-hmm. She was lucky to get. 50 cents a dozen, or depending on sizes, because she, my paternal grandmother used to size them out. Mm-hmm. And so she'd get probably 50 cents for a jumbo dozen, or 40 cents for a extra large, or whatever, you know. And right. We didn't do that with my maternal grandmother. We just did a bunch of eggs, a dozen of eggs, and that's what it was. But, you know, but now, you wouldn't get nothing off a dozen of eggs, that's for sure, not with the grain and all that stuff you got to feed them with. Right. But, but no, we, uh, I, th- I think myself, though, we have a lot to be proud of over here with the grain. Because we do, uh, we do the Easter egg hunt now, maybe thanks to you and getting, the, getting people together, helping get the volunteers. And that's fun, if it's not too cold. That's oh, fun. I know, yes, I know it. This was this year was really... No, it was in March that we were doing it. I know, that was early, Easter. boy, yeah. yes. And then, of course, the... the um, oh, the other one we got. We have the... Uh, oh, Christmas tree lighting. And that can be cold in November, November though it's getting earlier this year because it's the 23rd of November which normally it's freezing out there, but um, but we have all kinds of things that go on there. If 
fireworks the whole bit, mm -hmm. and um, and the parade, of course, is the Saturday before. Is the yeah Saturday before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And that gets them all excited for Santa Claus coming in and getting ready to tell him his wishes. But no. Um, but no, it, it's the it crane just changed from it nowadays from what it used to be. Well, it used to be the only thing that the family did all together. Yes. Other than church things. Yeah. And now there's just <clears throat> so many other things going on. The kids are going three ways to seven after school mm. with sports yep. and activities that families don't do things together, Grange included. No, they don't. <clears throat> There's too much homework, you know, they're in sports, yep. in orchestra, I mean, you know, homework to do, and I mean, it's just nuts what they've got. I mean, I, can't, I can remember we would never take our books home from school until the sixth grade. I mean, we wouldn't dare do our book, take our books home if we're in the fifth or fourth grades. We wouldn't do that at all, or third either. You didn't have the homework, or you did did it during, during school? We did it during school, yeah. when we were in grammar school. Because <coughs> I went to dame school over here on Canterbury Road from kindergarten through sixth grade. And the only time we did homework at, at home was with uh, the, the sixth grade. And you got to take your books home. Mm -hmm. And we thought we were, we thought we were pretty special, but um, but no, we never did that. So. But anyhow, it's just no, the school has changed. Families are going in all separate directions now. They are. It seems to be. Yeah, they are, and you can tell because, and they, they don't think the Grange is exciting, but really we are. We do. You know, it's 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 exciting as much as you want. To we be. have a lot of fun. Yes. We do have, and Gary Ford is our lecturer, and he's always trying to do something different at the meetings, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's funny because, of course, they hear that gong or something that, well, I mean, we used to start meetings, I can't remember, and when I just joined again in, in, in uh, 1966, it was very common for Grange to start their meetings at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, you had to wait for the men to get through chores. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the farmers who, they waited for them to get done chores, and then the wives would make supper, and off to Grange <coughs> they'd go. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun we had. And um, um, the... Uh, um, I was going to say the uh, meetings would last probably two hours or so, and um, you'd have your business meeting, then you'd have, well, you'd have your opening, then your reports, then your business meeting, then a program, mm -hmm. and then the closing, and then you'd go and get ready for the business part, but I mean for the closing, and then it was social time and lunch. Mm -hmm. And I, I can remember the first time I had lunch over here in 66, 67, I guess. Whenever I became an officer, I think it was 68 when I became an officer. I was elected steward. And uh, so I had the lunch. And what am I going to do? I'm a single kid who was in high school. Well, luckily my father had joined, so he did it with me. But... You know, what, what, what are you going to have? You know, I think I had Spam sandwiches and spreadable Spam. That was kind of gross, probably. <laughs> but my mother made up tuna fish salad, tuna fish salad sandwiches, or egg salad, yeah. you know. And then we had cookies and chips and things like that. But I didn't know what to do. Nobody ever offered to help, I'll tell you. But, but then some of them would have, like I said, oyster stew. Or sometimes you might have a hot dog for lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody would say, oh, dear, have you a hot dog at this hour? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, they, the trend was to start back meeting at 7.30. And then it was 7 o'clock. And then now we're down to 6.30. Now we're down to 6.30. And yeah. Just have a few refreshments. Yeah. 
but no, it was it was it was seven thirty. But of course, you know too. I mean, like I said, you know, people get out of either out of work or something, and uh, uh, the kids got out of school. But of course, the kids got homework, and right. if they wanted to go to a meeting, you know, they got to do the homework. Or sometimes they might bring it with them, but um, you know, it, it was it was good, you know. And so of course you had your special nights. I mean, you'd have visiting Grangers come mm -hmm. in to see you, and uh, sometimes they would be presiding masters nights. Uh, we ha would have past masters nights. That was always a popular one. Um, Presiding masters at lectures nights. We had presiding masters and presiding masters, lectures and secretary nights, um, corresponding officer nights. Never hear of that anymore. Home no. economics nights, no. youth nights, another neighbors big nights. That, another big one that we do is awards night. Yep, that's our big one. Community awards night in April, when we do the. Uh, Outstanding police officer and firefighter and teacher, citizen. You know, Esther, what I've been thinking of is that next year is our 105th anniversary. And I've been thinking about really doing something special because, you know, I know we had our 100th and we did things all year long. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm wondering what it would be like to do something really special on that year because May 14th is when we, we were organized. But I don't know yet. I gotta do. I've been doing some thinking on that, you know, because I don't know if we did. You know, my thought would be it would be nice to do a nice parade on Loudon Road, but I don't know. Be cap because the Grange was always parade minded. They used to they used to do a Spanish American War parade. I found out. They were always part of the, they always did a 4th of July parade, which I found out too. But of course the problem being is that there are not many bands nowadays in the summertime. Right. And that's your problem, and the police charge too, mm -hmm. even in the fall. But I don't know, I was just trying to think of something that would really tie in, you know, with everybody, the, community, the community and thing. But, um, I don't know, I just think it would be kind of nice or something, but anyhow, so it's just things to think about as we get ready for another year, but now we're in the summer season and it's really the quiet season, although you find in the, in the roster now that a lot of Grangers don't meet in the summer time. Well, the vacations and things, Yeah. people are gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because they would meet in the uh, winter time, but now we're finding the Grangers don't meet in winter; they're meeting in the summertime. Well, time. I think part of that is because of the age of of the members. Yeah. Oh, there's our ding ding. Well, I want to thank you, Esther, for coming in, talking about welcome. Grange and broadcasting our events coming up, and we want to mention that July twenty fourth. From what we say, six o'clock, right? Right. Here at Keach Park, and enjoy Never's Band afterwards. But all kinds of desserts and items to munch on as we get ready for another meet, eat, and greet. So you know what the Grange is all about. So, and Esther is our secretary, so she'll be there that night. And those who need to pay their dues, you can bring them that night. So Certainly. gladly, gladly take them. So. Thanks to Ian Marks, my director. It's been a great day, and uh, we'll look forward to talking with you soon on Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Pat.